what's up everybody it's nerp here and welcome to a video on the test server because earlier today scrolls waypoints update part two on the test server was released so this update has just cool some cool little changes and 20 brand new scrolls i'll be going over all of them in an overview video uh if you didn't see the first overview video of the waypoints update part one with the other for the first 20 new scrolls uh that's a while back on my channel and there is going to be there's still 16 scrolls that have yet to be unveiled in waypoints, not including the ones you're going to see in this video. So, this is part two of probably the three waypoint updates on the test server. So, it's not Monday, so most of you don't have uh, access to the test server. So, I'm doing this video to show you guys the new scrolls. And, I did I make it? I thought I made a deck of the new scrolls. Oh man, I don't think I did. Here, I guess we can go through. First, let's see uh, the change log in the in this thing so there's lingering spells now so you play the spell and it like stays it's like an effect that will stay in play for a couple turns um 20 new scrolls like i said rarity's not set so don't get like all like uh um worked up about like a card that's rare that shouldn't be um royal inspiration is cost two now it used to be four it's a pretty big change uh it was in the last test server update i believe so that used to be four, now it's two, so that makes night decks even better. As we know, night decks are going to be awesome with this update. Um, yeah, so little things like easier to see when abilities of units are used. This is actually a big change, hitting left and right arrows in the deck builder now scrolls to the library correspondingly. I love that change because I hate like having the mass wheel do it because it's so hard to tell like how far it's moving. It moves the whole thing kind of. It's like really annoying, like scrolling with the mouse wheel. And then who wants to scroll with a mouse like this way? So now you could uh, do one card at a time, just holding down like the keys. So I really like that. Uh, what else is there? Um, okay, so enchantments are more easily seen. Uh, now there's asterisks when you say like curse words and stuff. It used to just like take them out entirely. Like it just wouldn't send the message, not just asterisks. That's pretty good. Uh, some bug fixes. This is actually really nice. Well, it seems used to not like really. You st like you would curse like the middle unit in a relentless unit that was gonna puff the row it wouldn't do the minimum damage it would uh, need to do to that middle unit like it would just do its whole health value but now it will now like the unit will know that it's it's gonna save as much damage as it can for the end while killing all the creatures so that's really nice um, and that's basically it just a little eternal sword bug fix so now let's look at the scrolls um, I'll grab all of them in a deck for you before I set this. And here we have all of the new scrolls. So we have 10, 20 new scrolls, um, 11 spells, 7 creatures, and 2 structures. So more of a spell heavy, lingering spell heavy uh, patch today. Like the last one will have a lot of awesome huge creatures like the Ordnites and all that stuff. But this is going to be more spell stuff, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. And quick, quick note, um, my videos are kind of think you can think of it as a like when I make the video and I produce it I upload it but I don't set it public yet so um, it's like when I make a video it goes on, on a on a little line to get uploaded but some videos like this one just jump straight to the front of the line so they can just be uploaded right after I make them that's because I want to get you guys want to show you guys the new scrolls the day they come out so that kind of messes up some things down the line because other videos I may have thought it was going out on like a on like a Friday, but it ends up have to go out on a Sunday because there was two videos that got, that, that, that jumped to the front of the line. So I might say some things like in future videos, like "Oh, tomorrow's the uh, scrolls top plays of the week," even though it was like two days ago. So just don't be alarmed by that. Um, so here we go. Banner of Ordnance is a structure, one cost order structure. So cheap, one cost for three health. That's pretty good. Um, and when it's counted as zero, you may destroy all lingering spells. So it's pretty cool. And I like how it gives you the option. So if you have a lingering spell in play that that like that order wants to keep there and it's helping you, you don't have to destroy it. Like you can't destroy an individual one, but you can destroy all the ones on the field. So this is I think this is gonna be like I don't know, maybe order structures is gonna be a thing. This looks like a pretty big structure, kinda like the uh the what's it called? The thing that growth got, uh, 
uh, for in the, like the design spells. It was like the thing where you draw a scroll every time um, six creatures come to play. I forgot what it's called, but it's already on last over. But it's a pretty tall structure here. Another banner and flag. These flags are getting different every time. I hope they have like some meaning to them in the campaign when it comes out. So I'll just mention if I think it's going to be a like a scroll that's going to be like good enough to be used in ranked. And Banner of Ordinance, I think, will be a scroll in some decks in ranked. Caravans of Expanse. Spell Lingering. So Lingering means that when you play it, it's going to have an effect. It's going to be in play for this number, Linger 4. So that's it's four, four turns after it's played, it's still going to be working. So it's two costs. And while Caravans of Expanse is in play, Dominion Traits are active. So that's pretty self-explanatory. So... We have to notice what Dominion stuff does Order have. So it has, uh, so how do we check that? D Dominion Order. All right, so these are the stuff Order has. Order only has three Dominion units. It has this guy, so we'll get Spiky Four when you play this. Cleaver will have the biggest range, but Cleaver will have plus three attack, base counts and decrease by two when you play this. And K will be you have Ward. So at the moment, I don't think this is that uh, that useful. Maybe because it could affect the cleaver. That's the only thing you'd re it'd be really that worthwhile for. But then again, this is only two costs. So it could easily splash in another faction. So then if we go, as we know, there's no dominion in growth or energy. But um, in decay, there's a couple of dominions. So you might, you might be able to splash the order in decay. And then you have a relentless blade husk, a four attack bot account, or a plus two uh, attack for all on dead creatures with a new reflush seamstress so this could have a place but I'm not gonna put it in the probably using ranked train just yet but it definitely has potential when there's more Dominion units um, Squire here's our first creature it's a human so no soldier or knight so that's got to take note of that it's two two three that's pretty standard for two cost creature like gun automatons nogs uh, Kinfolk Ranger is just like a lot of things are two two three. Um, other creatures on the same row as Squire count as knights, so that's what that's what Squire has going for it. As we know, there's a ton of uh, there, there's a ton of uh, how do you know not trait? It's like a type. Like I forgot how you like search in like that thing. Whatever. But there's a bunch of knights, and how do you search that? Like it's like. Oh my god, that guy looks crazy. Um, knight. I don't know. I think I think that is right. I think I just have to open order. Yeah. So these are the order knights. That's that's a lot of knights now. There's a lot of knights now, and there's other scrolls that affect knights now. So let's go description knight. Yeah, these are the scrolls that affect other knights, and like this draws knights. So that's really nice. So um, yeah, knights are good. So this might this would probably be worthwhile in putting in a knight deck if you're gonna have some creatures that aren't knights. Like you probably want skirmishers because they're relentless and awesome, but they're not considered knights, they're considered soldiers. But if you put Squire on the road with them, they're knights, so they have like the bust from the knight sergeant and all that stuff. So Squire I think will be in ranked uh, in ranked knight decks. Fields of Strife, here's the orders uh Seems like every faction got their own lingering spell, or maybe more than one lingering spell for some factions. But this is the one order got Linger three, so this one only three turns. This one was actually each faction I think got two lingering spells. But um, yeah, so Caravan of Cax was four lingering. This is three, so this will last for less time. And all knights have their attack increased by the number of other units on the same row. Um, this is pretty good. So this is another thing that works for the knights. Play this, only three cost, and you have three turns. Just probably a lot of attack, much more attack than you would have. It says number of other units on the same row, so that probably includes your units and the other opponent's units. So you have a maximum of plus one, two, plus five attack for each of your creatures. That's crazy. And that could help you just deal a lot of vital damage. I mean, if we'd, and there's, it'd be better if there was more uh, relentless knights in order. The, the, the relentless units are really soldiers in order, but then again, with the squire, that could, that could help that. Oh, we didn't see the squire's attack animation. All right, so pretty. Oh, that's, I was gonna say pretty boring, but that's pretty cool that uh, the red orange like flame thingy from the sword. It's like a cool attack. Okay, so 
Now, Storm Knight. Five costs, four, two, five. Storm Knight has moved to. This thing looks so menacing. Look at that. Look at just That's it without its attacking. That's just, just standing there. I'm scared. <laughs> it's just ramped. Well, it's actually sick. Um, so, Human Knight. So, he's going to get all the buffs with the Knight stuff. It's a 4 2 5 for 5. That's pretty fine. And then, uh, move, move 2. So, or it has a lot of the move 2 stuff. Rusted Bean Potion. Um, has, like, Transposition if you want to move more and stuff like that. A lot of Displacement with Fathers and stuff. And Knight w Wings Captain is a soldier. So this gives you a knight that's going to be uh, moving around the board really fast. And that's really strong. I think this guy's going to be used in all mid to late game order decks. Um, and it kind of blows the... Not... No, uh, what's it called? Um, Vanguard is still very good. It's very good 5 drop. It's still going to be used in all knight decks. It's a knight too. But it kind of blows the other order 5 drop uh, wings charger out of the water. Five two four with no ability, <laughs> and this is four two five with move two and a knight. And I think at this point, if you're five cost, it's better to be a knight than a soldier. Maybe if you're like one or two cost, better be a soldier because you're gonna give me a more tempo deck with the wings captain. But soldiers doesn't have, don't have much things going for them as knights. Like soldiers just have really the wings captain. That's really it. Uh, so storm knight, very good. Now we're on to so those are the five order scrolls. There's a a one drop structure. Uh, uh, two a uh, two cost uh, lingering spell, two cost creature, three cost lingering spell, and five cost creature. Um, so it looks like yeah. And now we're on to energy. So here we have Gravelock Burrows, two cost lingering spell, linger four. When a Gravelock you control is destroyed, all, all your other Gravelocks get plus two attack until the end of your next turn. Eh. It's almost like this is like has the same idea as Fields of Strife, but it's much worse. Because, like, this is just... It's only when Gravelock's destroyed. And then you get it for the next turn. And it's only plus two attack. So this is just, I think, a lot better. But, I mean, if it's a, if it's a full-on Gravelock deck, this is probably going to be useful. So I think it will be in, like, ranked Gravelock decks. But... It might not be that powerful. Linger 4 is pretty decent. Only two costs. I think all these lingering spells will be pretty good, actually. But some better than others. So let's move on. Uh, three cost creature, Snargle Hunter. So you don't remember the Snargle was? That was in the last uh, past patch. Snargle is right here. So there's three three cards that have to do with Snargle. Snargle and Snargle Brain came out last time. You could just read this and read this. So I'm a pretty beefy creature. Um, and Snargle Hunter is a 3 2 3 for 3. Pretty standard. And when Snargle Hunter kills a beast, Increase current energy by 4 at the start of your next turn. This is pretty cool. Let's see his attack animation. Eh. Not too exciting. But uh, Snarl Hunter, I think... Well, let's see. Well, let's see the beasts in the game. So, type... Beast. So, there's a lot of beasts. Anytime Snarl Hunter kills one of these units... Now, let's look at beasts that have less than 4 health. So, besides Snargle Striped... That's funny. Snargle Hunter can't kill Snargle in one hit. <laughs> but um, besides Snargle, Fang Bear, Great Wolf, and this thing, which we're going to get to in a second. Is it Beast? What? Oh, it looks like it has like a face. Or no, I think it's like a human just like snuggling up to next to this bird. Okay, but um, yeah, so besides these four creatures, Snargle Hunter can one-shot any of these guys. And it's a lot of creatures that you're going to see. And that will give you plus four current energy, and energy can do a lot of things with the resources and surge and all that stuff. So, Sorrow Hunter, I declare as good, but big note, it's melee creatures, not range. So, I think there's going to be some, like, I could see this guy coming out in Gravelock decks. I think there's going to be some more um, melee. Like, right now, there's really ranged energy and structure energy. I think there's going to be a melee energy with, like, more Gravelocks and Machinated Mindset and stuff like that. And, like, uh, whatever their card uh those ironclad reavers those are still used in some range decks though but yeah so i think this guy's gonna be pretty good in some decks fodder pit a lingering spell for four cost so this is the most expensive lingering spell we've seen so far um we've seen this art before like has to do with grave locks pretty cool linger five so this five turns it will uh, go off after you play it. 
and all units with pillage get attack increased by two. This seems underwhelming because not many units have pillage. So let's see. Uh, so let's see. As we you know, it's only in energy and growth. And it's going to be harder to splash in growth because it's four cost. But then again, with loud, you only need to get to two energy. How do you do that? Let's, uh, description pillage. So these are the pillage scrolls. Like so this will have four attack. This will have four attack. Huh. That, I, that could work. With Ranger, it's going to get three attacks. Really nice. Actually, there's more. There's just more pillar units than I, uh, than I thought. Eel will get some extra attack. Eh. I don't think it's there's enough pillage units just yet to make it really that, that good. But certainly uh, decent on its own. Not amazing, though. Stone Enigma is a four-cost energy spell. All lingering spells are destroyed. If more than one lingering spell is destroyed, gain one energy and draw one scroll. They need this scroll in the game because, and some other was like this, because the lingering spells, as you've noticed so far, seem to be pretty powerful. So you need a way to just, of getting rid of them. So, so far, we've seen Order has a way of getting rid of this scroll. Energy is a much simpler way to placing this, like playing this spell, like all their other removal spells, and um, you get a permanent one energy and a draw one scroll if you destroy more than one. I think they should change this wording so it says two or more, because more than one kind of makes you like for a split second you think if it's only one spell in the field you can do it. And you keep in mind you could do this with your own lingering spell. So if it's like your lingering spells have to go out, like your if your grave lock burrows have to go out like your turn three, but you don't think you're gonna need it for like the next turn because none of your grave locks are dying, just use this and you can get one extra energy and a, and a scroll. So you know, so it plays for itself. So and this is uh, the last energy thing. It's another grave locks. So that's really cool. And it seems like there's a couple of unique units that came out in this uh, this thing. So let's see. It's attack animation. It's a melee creature, um, but that's fine because it's a grave lock, and most grave locks are melee creatures. So it's a two two four for four. So that's not too good, but it does have a magic four health. Let's see what its ability is. When Uhu's countdown is zero. You may reset its countdown to increase your current energy by the number of grey box you control, and you can increase energy. Um, I guess it's pretty darn good. Like, it's unique, so you can't put multiple ones on the board, but when you have this thing down, you can just, every other turn, you can have a monster turn. Let's say you have, like, five grey box in the board, that's, like, um, every other turn you get five extra energy. I, I think this guy's going to be definitely in all grey block decks, um, but not in really decks, not included without other grey blocks. Um, and it's pretty cool to notice the unique creatures all have a name like Jarl Urhald, uh, K, uh, Nuru, Flesh Seamstress. It's like they have like a title after their name. Like this guy's name is Uhu, and there's another um, unique guy down here, Builds of the Verdant. We'll get to her in a, just a few scrolls. And here's the growth scrolls two costs, clandestine orchards, spell, lingering. Linger three, so lasts for three turns. When a creature comes into play on your side, another random creature you control has its countdown decreased by one. This is a pretty good lingering spell, only two costs, three turns, and you basically have a, like a busting a face every single turn uh, for three turns, and you just have to play the card once. So if this is a very good scroll, I think I think it's going to be included in almost all almost all growth decks. Just get you guys attacking much much faster, and yeah. So that's really all I have to say, but I think it's oh, maybe a little too good. I really like this scroll. Budding Retreat, another lingering spell. Six linger is the highest linger we've seen so far. Um, so it's going to last for a very long time. And when a creature comes into play, wait. Yeah, never mind. When a creature comes into play, increase owner's current wild by one. Um, this is pretty darn good. So you can just play, you have massive turns for six turns in a row. But there's the catch. It works for your opponent's side too. So it's a good scroll, but it works for your opponent too. Like, this one only works for you. Um, probably say it's OP if it only worked it work for you this one, and it's still pretty good. I think it'll be also used in most growth decks. Now we got Builds of the Verdant. She's a human and she's a two-two-three. She's unique and has ward, so it's gonna be hard to take this thing down. Let's see its attack animation. Well, we've seen this before, haven't we? I think we released this, but um, it's kind of cool. She has like magic abilities. She's a. Uh, I wish it said like Mystic. I feel like she's like one of the Mystics. Like if you do type mystic, there is. Oh, there's a lot of mystics actually. Yeah, there's a ton. Look at all the mystics here. Did some of these gain mystic? Wow, there's a lot of mystic. I didn't think there was this many mystics. I thought it was really like or only Earthborn mystic and like Baleful Witch and like Wingsward. I had no clue these other guys were mystics. 
Well, whatever. Uh, so. Vilda. Attack is increased by one for each enchantment you control. So that's nice. Uh, this thing's gonna have a massive attack if you're running an enchantment deck. You can only have one on the board at a time. And... The 2-2-3 two, two, three for 3. 3 health for 3 cost is not that good. But then again, it has wards, so you don't have to worry about burns and all that stuff. I'm a little underwhelmed by this unique card. But I mean, it's not relentless, so... Like, the extra attack won't be that much. But I think it's definitely going to play in enchantment decks. Anything with ward can't be that bad also, so... I kind of like it. Rekindled Spirit is a spell. This is like... Fertile soil, but a little bit different. <laughs> um, sacrifice target creature you control, destroy all lingering spells, draw two creature scrolls. So, if you don't know what fertile soil is, you shall know that, though. Fert. Four costs as well, growth. And sacrifice target creature you control, draw three scrolls. So that draws three scrolls. This draws two scrolls, but they're both creatures, and that's generally what you want. Generally. And, um... You destroy all lingering spells. So this get, this is growth's way of destroying lingering spells. So, but then again, growth has two really good lingering spells. So maybe you don't want to play the scroll. Um, in a later game, growth deck, I think this will definitely be played because it's almost like it's like a pseudo fertile soil, and it could also work as destroying your opponent's really good lingering spell. So pretty good scroll here. I think that'll be used in rank decks. In later game rank decks, not like aggro growth, more like into late game growth. Samata Sift is a spell. It's pretty cool art here. So on a random creature scroll from your library and target tile, its health is set to 2. Um, wait a minute. I think that, is this, was this not in this, uh, I feel like this is not this, not the right, I feel like this came out last time. Um, let me quickly check. Hmm. I almost feel like I'm missing something. Um, oh yeah, this yeah this is this was here last time I believe. Uh, you can go check out the last thing. Yeah, I'm missing the gustly thing. Yeah, this is what I'm missing. This huge six. This is like that big six cost creature for uh, for growth. So here we are, and it's called the gustly Izuler. It's a beast. It's like an eagle thing. That's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. Um, five, two, five for six, so I guess that's fine. It's just like Witch Doctor. Actually, no, because Witch Doctor is like, attack was decreased to four. Um, and it has flying. If you don't want flying does, you can basically move anywhere on the board. So it's, it's pretty cool. You could just move wherever you want, but the catch is, if you move to a tile that's not adjacent to you, your countdown gets increased by one. So, I mean, growth is ways to work around that. Like, like, uh, rallies and all that stuff. But, um... So Gustly Azula, I think it's pretty good. I think it would be maybe more only in beast decks because I, I, I mean, it, for six costs, it's a five five with that relentless. I don't know. We'll see. I'm I'm a little undecided, undecided on this scroll. Definitely good. I'm not sure if it's great though. Might be five five. I guess you gotta say it's pretty good with fly. So we'll see. Sanctuary of the Lost. We're on to decay, decay stuff. So this is Decay's first lingering spell. Linger 5. It's a pretty long time. Undead creatures have wards. I think this scroll is awesome. It. Well, I mean, I think it might be too good and it might be unbalanced. Uh, as we've seen, there's a lot of Decay scrolls that are just like undead now and they're pretty darn good. And this for 5 turns will protect you from all burns, all damage curses, all that like polish flips. And it's only 2 costs. For 5 turns this will happen. I mean, there are ways to destroy lingering spells, but then your opponent has to waste waste uh, resources and stuff to destroy it. So Sanctuary of the Lost, I think, is really good. Let's just take a look at what what Decay's Undead Scrolls are. We got Harvester, amazing. This thing is pretty darn good. We'll look at it in a second. We get this, 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 and this. So yeah, I think this is gonna be very good and uh, undead, and maybe even be used in like a mono decay just to protect your harvesters and stuff. I don't know. We'll see. I think it's very good. Slayer of Vestige is a two-three-three three with Slayer, and it's undead. So key thing, undead. Really cool unit look here. It's like it's tall and skinny. It's Slayer. It kind of has that stab like uh, Omer Hunter has the other creature with Slayer. Um, so this gives you a Slayer thing for two costs. Only Hunter is four costs, but this only has three health, and it has two attack, like the other Slayer unit, and it has three countdown. I do think this is good though, even though it has 3 countdown, 
because uh, other things like flesh animator that will count down your undead units and the like I feel like there's been a push of like on un good undead stuff and good knight stuff so far in the waypoints like and also good early lock stuff I'm not really getting it for growth yet I think it's just like the the budding better thing and the budding retreat builds a, it's kind of different with growth but uh, I definitely see the themes in the other factions so service I think is gonna be in most on in all undead in, in all undead decks but it's not a human so that that's a big thing also it's not a human so it does not have synergy with Witch doctor so maybe exclusive to some different kind of decay decks we'll see forbidden runes is decay's other lingering spell three three uh turns will stay in play for three costs all non-combat damage against idols is increased by one i'm going to say that this will definitely be strong in some decks because non-combat damage as i guess is loyal darklings wicked beings beetle stone solid direct idol damage and that's also watchers watcher gettings play this before a watcher again and then you have the op necro get in with watcher that was before watcher was nerfed so only do two damage idols so this i think is going to be i think maybe you would splash like one of these in like a deck not splash just put one of these in a deck with a watcher again and then you could have a ton of fun so i think this would be pretty good forbidden runes invocation centuries a totem for decay three cost four health so that's it um kind of like a gravestone a tombstone when a lingering spell is played, its, its owner's idols are dealt one damage. Um, Dege has this direct idols damage, direct idol damage thing, so I think this kind of fits. And combine this with Forbidden Ruins, and you have two damage dealt to your to the opponent's idols. So it kind of stops them from playing uh, spells. I don't know if it's that good. It is a nice wall if you need it to be. So I think this would be pretty decent. Probably part of like something like Yellow Decay. I don't know, maybe. Maybe two Kai costs for that. I don't know. Um Lhasa High Guard. I would think that this is called this is unique because it has like a name kind of a thing. Um Lhasa, right? I thought this would be unique because these two factions got unique. Let's say I didn't get the order didn't get unique either though. Um, the two pillage factions got unique. So it's creature human warrior. I don't know if there's any other warriors. So let's go check. So human. So it works with witch doctor and warrior, and that is the only warrior. Interesting. Seems like a lot of creatures are pretty good warriors. So it's pretty big. It's like a big guard thing. Uh, it's six two four. Um, so that's pretty good. I mean, that's pretty standard for six cost. And any unit facing Um Lassa High Guard has, with no units in between, gets minus three attack and moves zero. That's pretty important. You can place this thing down, and they basically are nullified. They will have a small attack, and they can't move. So Um Lassa High Guard is like. Just two things. It stops your opponent's frontmost creature in that row that you're placing it on. Um, just stops them all together. And you get a 6-2-4 human to put in front of your Witch Doctor or something. So I could see definitely this being in uh, Decay decks with humans and Witch Doctor. Um, you might have to take like the early you might have to like take out the Ripper and like have it be more like more towards mid late game instead of like getting early creatures. But we'll have to see. And it's a very beefy creature too. Um, I would, for six costs, I would like to have like more like five costs though. It says it says guard. It looks pretty like big too, um, but I don't know. So these are the twenty new scrolls. I hope you all really like them. I certainly like a lot of them, and I can't wait for waypoints. But first, we're gonna have to wait for the next sixteen scrolls to come out, and that's gonna be fun. Um, so I guess that's it. I will probably do some more. Oh yeah, there's gonna be a video about me playing on Tessa with Decay uh, in the coming days. I think. And keep in mind, I recorded that video before I recorded this one. So um, I'm like playing around with the scrolls like before these Decay scrolls came out. And these some of these Decay scrolls definitely be in the deck now that I know they're there. So don't be alarmed just say like, why no, why didn't you use Sanctuary of the Lost Nerf? Why didn't you do that? So like, just, just know that I recorded it earlier. And I guess that's going to be it. So thank you all for watching. Subscribe if you want more content like this. Submit your plays for Top Scrolls Plays of the Week this Friday. And um... I guess that'll be it. Uh, like or dislike the video, depending on how much you enjoyed, and keep on playing scrolls. I will see you all next time.